Hey guys, welcome back. So today I'm going to be going through my highlighters as well as my bronzers and kind of contouring type of products. So let's go ahead and get started. Now really quickly before I jump into these, there are a few products that I just wanted to quickly share that I actually didn't get a chance to share in my previous videos. These did belong in those videos, but I mentioned to you guys that there were some things I knew I had, but I probably stuck in the wrong drawer. And that is the case with these guys, so I just wanted to quickly share them. The first one is this Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base, and this one did belong in my primer declutter. I am gonna hold on to it, I just wanted to quickly share it with you guys. It is a really super luxurious, like heavy duty primer. It's probably the thickest, most moisturizing primer that I own. I mean, you can see how thick it is. Like even if I turn it upside down, there's nothing coming out of there. And this is an amazing primer if you have really dry skin or if you're heading out to like really intense cold weather. Personally, on those drier skin days, this is just like my absolute go-to. Plus my foundation looks amazing on top of it because it creates such a like buttery, smooth base for my makeup. So I just wanted to quickly share that guy because I do really love it and I didn't get a chance to share it. These two guys were supposed to be in my concealer, corrector, decluttering, and they were actually sitting inside of my vanity. So sorry, I didn't get a chance to share those, but these are the Mimi I'm Correctors. And these are my two favorite shades from their Correctors line. This is the Lavender and the Hide Mint color. And the Lavender is meant to brighten your skin, the Hide Mint is of course for hiding like redness and things like that. What I really appreciate about these correctors is that you can see they're kind of like a lighter tone type of corrector. Like, I don't know, kind of reminds me of a cloud or something, you know, like it looks very airy and just cool toned and a lot lighter on the skin than some other correctors I see that tend to be a little bit deeper in tone and thicker in texture. These are super lightweight, but just pack a ton of color and I just love that they I don't know they kind of just remind me of like unicorn colors like let me give you the green for instance I really do love these and I will continue to hold on to them. Okay, so let's go ahead and finally get into the highlighters and bronzers. And this first one is the Anastasia Contour Kit. It just looks like this. This I will continue to hold on to even though I rarely ever reach for it. I really bought it for this banana yellow color because I remember it being like the it under eye setting powder for a long time, but I mentioned before now that I've actually fallen way more in love with the Wet n Wild version of this powder, the one that comes in that contour and highlighting duo. I do like the contouring and bronzing powders though. I feel like they look really natural and soft on the skin. These three at the top, honestly, I don't really use anymore. So it's unfortunate I only use about half of it, but I am gonna continue to hold on to it, at least for the contouring and bronzing shades. I also have this Anastasia Beverly Hills Contour Cream Kit. And I think this is, yeah, in shade medium. This I've had for about two years now, so I'm kind of thinking that this year is probably the last year I can get away with using it because the creams are a little dried up. But I actually really, really love this contouring palette. I love the colors, like I love this orange that it's a little bit more of a tangerine type of orange, not like a pumpkin-y orange. I love these shades here for like mixing and matching. I like the contouring shades as well. I pretty much could just use this palette all the time. The problem is, is that I always shove it in a drawer and always forget about it. So I feel like this year though, I have to start using it up more because the creams are starting to dry up slightly which kind of sucks, but I do love this contour kit. Okay, so moving into bronzers, I have this Chanel Soleil Tan de Chanel bronzer. It just looks like this, and this I will continue to hold on to, even though I think it's kind of starting to dry up as well, but this is such a beautiful, natural-looking bronzer. I think if you have light to medium skin tone, this is just one of those things where it's gonna give you a natural warmth to your skin. You know what I mean? Like there isn't any harsh lines with this. It's super easy to blend out. And so I will go ahead and hold on to this. It's one of the most natural bronzing products I've ever used. I have this NYC Smooth Skin Bronzer and I thought I got rid of this last year. It's the Sunny Bronzer. I know a lot of people really love this, but I just could never bring myself to be that crazy about this. I don't think the color makes that big of an impact on my skin. Plus it's not really a super 
like soft type of powder. It's kind of a little bit harder in texture. Like I kind of feel like it just takes a lot of building on the skin to get the color of this to actually show up on me. So this one I'm gonna go ahead and just let go of. I have this Milani face powder and this is in the shade 06 medium tan. This actually is not a bronzer. It's just a really dark powder and I remember loving this so much. Milani powders are so incredibly smooth and soft and buttery and that's what that looks like. This one I'm gonna go ahead and continue to hold on to. It's obviously really dark for me, but I think it's one of the darkest tone powders that I own and I always like to have a little bit of variety. Plus, I just love the formula of this powder. It's so incredibly smooth. I think this will be great for just really like super bronzy, tan days if I do have any in the summer, God willing, that I have a good tan in the summer, but I will continue to hold on to this. This is the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil Bronzer. This one I use pretty much every single day. This has always been my go-to everyday bronzer. It works for me all year round. I love that it's just a warm bronzy color or chocolatey color. It's not um, anything shimmery or red or orange. It's just perfect in my mind and it almost kind of looks like I might be hitting pan soon on it which is pretty exciting but yeah this is just my go-to so I will continue to hold on to that. I have these two guys from Laura Geller and I think they are the exact same product. Yeah these are the bronze and brighten products. This one says medium and this one says regular. I don't really know if there's a difference at all but um, here's what these guys look like. I can honestly say I don't think I touched these at all in 2016. I don't know. Sometimes like products like this scare me a little bit where they're like marbleized because you don't really know what color you're actually going to get. It's obviously a mix of like nude, white, pink, and then like deeper brown colors. So there is the shade medium. It's kind of a little bit of a red tone, which I'm really not all that crazy about. And then this is the regular shade which is obviously a pretty dramatic difference. So this one almost seems more of like a deep nude where this one seems like a red tone brown color. So very, very different in the shades, but I will continue to hold on to the both of these. I can probably already tell you I'm not gonna love them just because I can see they both have little bits of shimmer and glitter running through them. So if you're not a shimmer or glitter person in your bronzer, I would not recommend these, but I will go ahead and continue to play with them a little bit more. This is the e.l.f. bronzer palette, and I know right away I'm going to hold on to this because I love e.l.f. quads. I think they are some of my favorite products that e.l.f. comes out with, period. Their blush quads, their bronzer, their contouring quad, which I think I have in the other little basket. I love all of them, and this is such a great bronzing palette. I think if you are on a budget and you're looking for a new bronzing powder, this is a great one to try out because you have a variety of undertones. There's one with a, a little bit, I think it's a, um, let's see, yeah, this one has a little bit of like a reddish undertone. This one is a little bit more cool tone. You have a slight satin finish one and then you have this kind of goldeny bronze one with little flecks of shimmer kind of running through it. I don't know if you can really see, but yeah, there you can kind of see there's a little like gold sparkle running through it. Essentially, no matter what you want to create, you can kind of find within this range. I really, really highly recommend this. It's one of my absolute favorites and I just love the variety of colors going on in this bronzing palette. This is the Benefit Do The Hula bronzer and this is the liquid form of it. It's a soft matte liquid bronzer for face and it has a little pump like that. This one I'm actually pretty tempted to purchase the full size version of if they still have it, but I really, really love this. It's just a very soft, natural, kind of like thin veil of color on my skin. Like this isn't something that's going to deepen your skin tone by like five or 10 shades. Like if you're looking for something really dramatic to kind of give you that super tanned look, I don't think this is really gonna give it to you. For me, this more so looks like I went out in the sun for like a few hours and then came back in. You know what I mean? Like it's a very subtle warmth of color. Maybe you could continue to build it on the skin and make it a little bit more bronze, but I like it just for one layer. It's very natural and subtle on the skin and just makes me look like I'm not a total vampire because I do work from my home office, so I don't really go outside all that often and this just makes me look like 
every once in a while I go outside, you know what I mean? So this one I will continue to hold on to, but I might end up purchasing the full size version of it. That's how much I like it. I have another little mini Too Faced Chocolate Soleil bronzer, which I will hold on to for travel. Next, I have this Maybelline Master Contour V-Shape Duo Stick in the shade Medium. And this was something that I purchased in 2016. I have to be careful when opening it because this part actually came loose out of the push-up tube and sometimes gets stuck to the cap and will just come out in the cap. But I like the bronzing side of this. It's a really smooth, really easy to blend, beautiful warm brown color, but I don't like the highlighting side. I think it's a little too kind of pasty and yellow and really just super light tone. Like, see how drastic those two colors are? I know some people really love the super light under eye look, but I don't know why I just can't get into it. I don't know if it's because I'm kind of bitter about it because I never could really kind of master the super light tone under eye thing and make it look good on me or it's just because I really don't like it and I feel like it looks a little bit phony. But nonetheless, I really am not crazy about the highlighting side because I feel like it just looks way too noticeable. I don't think I loved it enough to hold on to it just for the bronzing side and I feel like it'll end up just being messy and I'll just forget about it the way I do a lot of products like this. So this one I will go ahead and let go of. This really pretty gold mirrored one is actually something that I got from a company that I used to work for. It's a really beautiful bronzer. It's like a half brown kind of warm toned matte bronzer and then half a lighter toned shimmer bronzer. And I actually can't tell you what brand this is. The reason being that I got this complimentary from our product development team when I was working for a beauty agency. And a lot of times, a lot of the test products they would have or create, they would just put in this big giant bin for everyone to just go crazy and pick out whatever they wanted. And this is one of the things that I got. So I have no idea if this even became a real bronzer for a company. The company that I worked for managed a lot of different beauty brands. So I can't tell you the brand name because I honestly have no idea, but it is really, really pretty and I will continue to hold on to it. I have this Smashbox bronzer. It's the Bronze Lights Suntan Matte. Oh my gosh, it is so, so smooth. I feel like it's a little bit dark and a little bit red toned. It is such a smooth powder. I feel like that's kind of what's making me want to hold on to it a little bit more. It's probably way too dark for me, but I'm not ready to let go of it yet. I have a little mini NARS Laguna bronzer, and I am gonna hold on to this little mini guy. I got rid of the full-size version of it last year in that decluttering that I did because I just have never really fallen that in love with this. I feel like it just looks way too harsh on my skin and not all that flattering, but just for experimenting and kind of dupe sake, I will hold on to this guy. And then lastly in this basket is the e.l.f. Contouring Blush and Bronzing Cream. This is in the shade Saint Lucia. I absolutely love the both of these. I love this cream blush and I do love the bronzer. Again, it's another one of those that's not too red or too orange. It's just the perfect amount of warmth to the skin and I really do enjoy these shades. So this one I will continue to hold on to. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and get into the highlighters. And the first one I have, which is already pretty dirty, it's the Vintage by Jessica Liebeskin. And I say it's already dirty because I actually haven't even used this guy yet. I've only swatched it out. I think I shared this on an Instagram story where I was doing a um, unboxing for my glossy box. This is one of the products that was inside. And this is the highlighter duo in Rose Quartz and Chocolate Diamond. And I remember mentioning, I think on Instagram, that typically if I saw these, I wouldn't even swatch them only because I'm not really all that into colored highlighters. Like I kind of like a standard gold or champagne. I've never been into like the blue toned ones or pink or chocolate toned ones. Like I feel like that might look a little too crazy on the face until I swatch these, which I have to show you guys how insanely gorgeous and pigmented these are. I love that they have a little bit of hint of kind of like that pink and that brown in there, but they don't look like a super crazy streak of one bold color on your skin, you know what I mean? Like it kind of blends in and adds a, just a little hint of the color, which I really, really like. So this one I will hold on to. I haven't even tried it on my skin yet, but I'm very excited to see how I like that guy. This is the e.l.f. Contour Palette. I will hold on to this one as well, but I really do love these. With the exception of this color, I never reach for it. It's kind of like an awkward 
super white based gold. Maybe if you have a much lighter complexion, you might like this, but I do really like all three of these colors. I use this for setting my under eye area sometime. This makes for a great contour and this does make for a great bronzing shade. This is a little baby tart highlighter in the shade Angelic. I don't even know if this is like a permanent highlighter. I think I got it in a little set from Sephora, like a holiday set, and I will continue to hold on to it. It's a really nice soft pale champagne. This is the Benefit What's Up and I have tried this as a highlighter a few different times and I really haven't liked it. The only reason why I did hold on to this is because I think it was Samantha March who I watch here on YouTube was talking about how she used this as an eyelid color. Like she was using it as a cream shadow and it looked stunning on her. So part of me wants to hold on to it purely for that. It's kind of like a peachy toned shade, but I found that this does not sit well on my skin. It looks really obvious and unflattering and just very, very noticeable on my face. Like it doesn't kind of melt into the skin the way a lot of my other powder or kind of like liquidy type of highlighters do. It just kind of sits right on top and looks a little bit awkward. So I think um, I will go ahead and let this guy go. I might want to try it as an eyelid color, but I feel like I have a ton of shadows that mimic the exact same finish as this. So this one, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just let go of. I have my MAC Mineral Skin Finish in the shade Soft and Gentle. This is a long time go-to for me. It's one of my first early like MAC purchases via YouTube. Like it was one of those YouTube made me buy a type of products. I really do like it. It's very powdery and has a lot more fallout. Every time I pull it out, now that I've used so many different highlighters at this point, I keep realizing how powdery this is, but I still love it. It's such a beautiful golden shimmer on the skin and it's just really flattering. This next one is a little mini highlighter by Laura Mercier. It's the Golden Mosaic Shimmer Block. And this did come in a holiday set from Sephora. I think I got a couple years ago now. I know for a fact I have never used this on my skin. I might've swatched it before, but I've never used it on my face just because I think when I look at these three colors, I get a little bit intimidated because they seem so deep, but I really need to make an effort of actually trying this guy out. Honestly, if this were a drugstore highlighter, I probably would just let it go because I have so many other highlighters that I already could try out. But because it's Laura Mercier, I'm not gonna lie, I do want to hold on to it and actually try it on my face. So this one I'm holding on to as well. This next one is an oldie but a goodie. It's the Dior Amber Diamond Highlighter. I don't know if they make this anymore, but I just, I don't know. I love it so much. I have a little Lorac Spotlight Perfectly Lit Highlighter, and this I love so much. This is the perfect daytime highlighter for me. It's nothing too reflective and obvious. It has a little bit of kind of like a light reflecting property to it, but it's not a straight shimmer or glitter or anything. It looks so beautiful. I have this little mini high beam highlighter from Benefit and this I will hold on to. I think this is actually one of the only liquid highlighters that I own, which is crazy to me because I feel like as I've gotten older, I've started to appreciate liquid highlighters more than powders just because now that I have a little bit more texture in my skin, powders do look a little bit more obvious and accentuate those areas a little bit more where I feel like liquid or cream highlighters tend to just melt into the skin a little bit more and sometimes look more natural. It's one of the only pink highlighters that I own as well, but it just gives my skin a little pearly pink glisten to it, which I really love. Speaking of natural, I have this Laura Geller Baked Highlighter in French Vanilla. This is a really unique highlighter in that it doesn't even look like one face on. Like you would almost think this looks like a face powder. You can see it's a little bit of a lighter tone. What I feel like this does is just lighten certain areas of the skin. So it's not something that I would say is like a bam in your face highlighter. It's more so I feel just to kind of manipulate the like shape of your face and kind of bring attention to either your cheekbones or forehead without looking like a crazy intense highlight. It just adds a little bit of lightness to your skin. So this one I will hold on to as well because I love the natural highlighters just as much as the really intense ones for the daytime. I have this Kevin Aquan candlelight highlighter. I got this totally on a whim during a Sephora VIB sale a couple of years ago and I can't even say that I've really used it. It was so freaking expensive and I know it's like a cult 
favorite or has a really big cult following, that's what it looks like there. Again, this isn't anything that is really gold or really silver. It's kind of in the middle or a little bit of like a neutral tone highlighter, which I really do appreciate. I just have to get in the habit of actually using it, but it is a very smooth, silky powder. Another thing I'm not crazy about with this is that the packaging broke instantly. And so it's kind of a pain to close sometimes. Now, these guys are the e.l.f. HD highlighting powders. I did do a full review and demo on all of these. And if you're interested in seeing that, I will go ahead and link that video down below. So this one is Sunset Glow, which is kind of a peachy toned highlighter. This one, which has unfortunately a huge gash in it because I'm super clumsy, it's the shade Starlight Glow, which is the more like champagne-y toned highlighter. And then lastly is Bronzed Glow, which is obviously the bronzy or more golden tone highlighter out of the three. And to be honest, I wasn't that crazy about these highlighters. I felt like they looked a little bit powdery on the skin, but I know for some people they loved these. Like I know some people loved Sunset Glow, some people of starlight glow so it really does go to show you how personal makeup is and preferences of makeup i just felt like they looked so powdery on the skin i do want to hold on to sunset glow and starlight glow for now just for the sake of maybe playing with them in the summertime bronze glow on the other hand i'm just going to go ahead and let go of it was really deep it's a very intense gold color i think for deeper complexions it's actually very pretty but for me it's just not the right fit for my skin tone so i'm going to go ahead and let this one go. Now this is my kind of go-to nighttime highlighter and you can probably tell because it is so beat up and disgusting but it is the MAC Whisper of Guilt. This is just one of my all-time favorite highlighters. You can see it's probably literally blinding you right now in the lens because that's how shiny this is. I don't have to build it up over and over and over on my skin to get it to show up. It's just one of those easy go-tos. Plus I am more of a warmer undertone person. So gold, I feel always looks the best on me. And on the same note, I do have Laura Geller's Gilded Honey, which is actually very close to Max Whisper of Guilt. I think it's just maybe a little bit more of a deeper golden color, but this is another one of those where I don't have to build it up a lot on the skin. One or two applications is more than enough. Like I'm glowing beyond outer space with this guy. It is so beautiful, especially for photos. Like if you have a hard time getting your highlighter to show up in pictures, this is one to check out because it'll do it for me every single time. Almost last, but certainly not least, it's the Essence So Glow Cream to Powder Highlighter in the shade number 10, Look on the Bright Side. I think this is probably one of my favorite makeup discoveries in 2016. I absolutely love this. If you guys watched my Essence try on haul video where I purchased a ton of different Essence products and I tried them out all at once on camera with you guys. I'll go ahead and link that video down below in case you didn't see it. This is one of the products that I did try out and I was very surprised by how much I love this. And just looking at it in the pan, it doesn't look like anything that exciting. It kind of just looks like a pearl toned highlighter with not a lot of shimmer going on, but this was actually a lot more noticeable on my skin than I thought it was gonna be, and there's a little swatch of it there. Now that's just a little baby swatch of it. I could easily build it up, but it has the most beautiful, natural glow to the skin. I am absolutely obsessed with this. If you're looking for a good drugstore highlighter, I would highly recommend checking out this guy. And the last little thing in this drawer is the e.l.f. High Definition Under Eye Setting Powder, which I really should use more often because I really do enjoy it. It is a lot like the Laura Mercier Under Eye Brightening Powder, and here's what it looks like. You can see it has a very light baby pink tone to it. There's a little hint of sparkle in there, which I'm not crazy about. I'm kind of annoyed that they did that. I don't know if maybe they've reformulated it recently without the sparkle, in there, I'd be interested to check out Elf's website and see if they have because I do really like this. It acts just like a translucent powder with a little hint of pink in there. It kind of adds like a little bit of a baby doll effect to the skin, which I really do like. It looks very flawless on the under eye and doesn't look really heavy or powdery either. Okay guys, so here are all of the highlighting products that I'm gonna continue to hold on to. 
And then here's the contouring products and bronzers. And then here's a little overview of everything that I'm letting go of. So I have two highlighters, a bronzing product, and then one kind of like contouring product as well. Okay guys, if you did enjoy this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up so that I know. And if you're new to my channel, definitely don't forget to subscribe. That way you stay up to date with all of these decluttering's. If you missed any of my previous ones, I will go ahead and link them down below. Otherwise, thank you guys again for watching. I love you so much and I will see you next time. Bye.